Thanks so much for doing this. It must Thank be, you. It must be great for you to be back in your adopted home state. It is so great, Jake. I'm having the best time being home. I love it. And you get to see your granddaughter. You get I to do. sleep in your own bed. Yeah, I do. And I get to travel around New York. What could beat that? Right, which you've been doing since 1999, I guess. I have. Yeah. <laughs> so. But this is, um, this is exciting. And it's a, it's a little bit nostalgic because I was in Buffalo and Rochester uh, yesterday and you know lots of places along the trail. The campaign has obviously gotten a little bit heated between you and Senator Sanders. <laughs> when I interviewed him, uh, he told me that the two of you, he knows both of you will do everything in your power to make sure that Republicans don't win the White House, no matter right. who wins the nomination. Right. But he also told me uh, that he has his doubts about what kind of president you might make. Do you have similar doubts about what kind of president he might make? Well, look, I've said uh, repeatedly that I'd take him over Donald Trump or Ted Cruz any day. I think people know that I will be a president who will follow through on what I've said. That's why I've laid out plans. I want to knock down all the barriers that stand in the way of people getting ahead and staying ahead. I want to protect people's rights. I want to protect our country. Um, I want to unify our country. And I think I'm in a very good position to actually get that done. But do you have doubts about what kind of president he might be? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't have any, uh, anything negative to say about him. Your husband, there was an interesting moment in Philadelphia, I'm sure, your husband interrupted by some Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. protesters. Um, and he very passionately defended your use of super predator back in the 90s. And a, a word I'm, I know you've said that you regret using and that you wouldn't use again. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to just like more, more broadly ask you um, about what your husband said, because he, he did say something very interesting, which was there were a lot of people back then, uh, African Americans, who were sending young African Americans to their deaths, in, 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 and that was what was behind the term super predator, and those black lives matter. What, what, do, you, what do you make of that whole debate? Well, I think what um, Bill said is that we should all be listening to each other, and I certainly have been listening. On um, the very first day of this campaign, I gave a speech about criminal justice reform and ending the era of mass incarceration. I have been consistently speaking out about what I would do as president. And I think it's important for people to recognize we have work to do, that there were uh, a lot of people very scared uh, and uh, concerned about high crime back in the day. Um, and now we've got to say, OK, we have to deal with the consequences, and one of the consequences is, uh, in my view, over-incarceration of people who should not have been in the criminal justice system. They have an addiction problem, a mental health problem. They have committed a low-level offense, a nonviolent offense. So I want to divert people from the criminal justice system and from being incarcerated, and I want to do more if people are in corrections institutes to help them while they're there, and I want to do more to help them when they get out, re-enter into society. More, more uh, personally, your husband obviously very, very much wants you to win. Um, and he would do anything, I'm sure, to, to do that. But he also is somebody who understandably wants to defend his legacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if those two things are ever in conflict. And if I could ask what you said to him when you saw that footage out of Philadelphia. I, I'm not saying there was anything necessarily wrong with what he was saying, mm -hmm. but, it, but it, was just, it was just an interesting moment um, about a very important issue. Well, he's not only a former president, he's my husband, right. and he does take uh, defending and protecting me very seriously, and I appreciate that. And I think he uh, has a great legacy. If we're going to talk about his eight years as president, we should talk about everything. And he said last summer to the NAACP uh, that a lot of uh, good things uh, happened to try to lower crime, save lives, and all of that. But clearly, some things happened that uh, were not foreseen and need to be now addressed. And I, I think that's good leadership. You know, you don't do something and never keep asking, is it working? Is it having unintended consequences? And so that's why when I was in the Senate, I introduced legislation to end racial profiling. I supported uh, trying to end the disparity between sentencing over crack cocaine and powder cocaine and took a lot of other uh, action in concert with uh, my colleagues to try to deal with some of these issues. Are you going to tell me what you said to him when you saw the when you saw the video? I mean, no, I, I mean, you know, he he believes that people need to talk and listen to each other, yeah. and he is often 
uh, you know, very clear, I will listen to you, but then you have to listen right. to me, respond, and we need to get back to doing that. Um, earlier this week, uh, you appeared with Governor Cuomo here in New York mm -hmm. at an event where the minimum wage was officially raised to $15 right. an hour. You support letting the states do that. On a federal level, I believe you support raising it to $12 mm -hmm. an hour. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So Senator Sanders told me that he, he found it somewhat amusing that you did that, uh, given that your p position is more nuanced in the sense that you don't support raising the federal minimum wage to $15 as he does. W what do you think of that? Well, I have been in favor of what's called the fight for 15 for a year. I have been supportive of the uh, unions and activists and officials who've come together to try to raise the minimum wage to 15. In states? In states. And if you look at what happened here in New York, I think it actually supports my position because there's a phase in. 15 is being phased in in New York City and the surrounding area, but you're going to be phasing in at a much slower rate in upstate, in places that are less uh, populated, where there are some economic challenges. That's exactly my position. I want to raise the national minimum wage to 12, which is the highest it would have been by any uh, measure since 1968. I'm in line with the uh, Democratic position in both the Senate and the House, but I want to encourage places, both locally and statewide, who can go further. So actually, what happened in New York, which I was very proud to support, uh, is in keeping with my approach to this. Why not? support $15 nationally just because there are some states that you don't think it's necessary because the the cost of living is not as expensive well, as others but take New York Jake yeah they couldn't go to 15 statewide because there are different economic uh, circumstances so they have made it very clear that it's going to be a slow phase in and even in the legislation that it was going to be evaluated to make sure that it didn't have adverse economic consequences well there are a lot of places that are you know, not well off around the country. They are now uh, required to have a $7.25 uh, minimum wage. So to go from that to 12 is a big leap. Now, I want to encourage every place that can get to 15. So the, the New York Cities, the Los Angeleses, the Seattles, and California raised its uh, minimum wage, but it also took into account different geographic areas with different economic uh, circumstances. Senator Sanders told me that Israel's response in Gaza was disproportionate, that was his word, leading to an unnecessary loss of innocent life. Now, you told The Atlantic um, in 2014 that, quote, Israel did what it had to do to respond to the attacks. What do you make of Senator Sanders' take on it, that it was disproportionate? Well, he'll have to speak for himself, but... Um, you don't agree, though? Well, I, I agree with what I said, which is when you are being attacked um, with rockets raining down on your people and your soldiers are under attack, uh, you have to respond. And I think that uh, what I learned when I negotiated the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in 2012 is that uh, Hamas provokes Israel, they often uh, pretend to have people in civilian garb acting as though they are civilians who are Hamas fighters, and it's a very difficult um, undertaking for Israel to target those who are targeting them. And I think Israel has had to defend itself, it has a right to defend itself. It did not go seeking this. This was uh, you know, promoted by Hamas, and I support Israel's right of self-defense. Jeff Weaver, uh, Senator <clears throat> Sanders' campaign manager, said that you, your foreign policy and you support a foreign policy that helped give rise to the creation of ISIS. Well, that is beyond absurd. And, you know, they're saying a lot of things these days, and I'm just going to let them say whatever they choose to say. Um, but, uh, you know, ISIS was primarily uh, the result of the vacuum in Syria caused by Assad, first and foremost, aided and abetted by Iran and Russia. So I think that uh, let's put uh, responsibility where it belongs. Um, Weaver also s told an ABC podcast that there will, quote, certainly be a contested convention if neither of you hits the magic number with pledged delegates. Do you think it would be a mistake for Senator Sanders to contest the nomination at the convention if you're leading in the popular vote and leading in pledged delegates after the California primary? 
Well, I think that uh, we should look at where we are. Uh, right now, I am leading uh, him with about two and a half million uh, votes in the popular vote. I'm leading him uh, in pledge delegates with a larger uh, margin than, uh, uh, than Senator Obama ever had over me. Uh, I feel good about the upcoming contests, and I expect to be the nominee. And I will hope to have a unified Democratic Party so that we can turn our attention to the Republican nominee. Either Donald Trump or Ted Cruz would be uh, a terrible choice for America. So we need to run uh, a unified Democratic Party campaign to bring as many people on our side as possible. And I've been putting together a broad, inclusive coalition, and I think I will continue to be able to do that. Are you preparing for the scenario where you, where neither of you enter the convention with the exact number of pledge delegates you need, uh, and there might be something of a, of, of a floor fight or a contested convention? Are you getting ready for that just in case? No, I'm, I intend to have the number of delegates that uh, are required to be nominated. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. Really appreciate your time. Good to talk to you.